Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Third Gen Ryzen reviews have been pouring in for over a week, and they're beyond impressive. The CPUs come with higher core counts, better IPC, and faster clocks, but they also bring with them a new chipset, the X570. What sucks is that the boards are quite a bit more expensive than their previous generation counterparts. To top it off, AMD made it clear that the X570 isn't even meant to replace the X470. Instead, it's essentially a more premium option. So the question becomes, are X570 motherboards worth it? Do you need one for your fancy new Ryzen chip? Specifically to get the most out of it, meaning your highest clocks, better performance, etc. To answer this, I actually compared the X570 Tai Chi to MSI's B450 Tomahawk. And hold on, I know what you're thinking. That's not a fair comparison, it should be the X470, and that's not even a high-end B450. Of course the B450 won't be as good. Give me just a minute and hear me out. For this test, I used the Ryzen 9 3900X, 16GB of Trident Z3600 memory, and the NCXT Kraken AIO for cooling. You can find the rest of my test bench in the description below. So starting things off, I overclocked the 3900X as much as I could without going past 1.45 volts, and you really don't even want to stay at that voltage for long. In the end, I could only get to an all-core overclock of 4.3 GHz on the X570 at 1.43 volts, which got a very nice Cinebench score of 3,313. Unfortunately, while I could get it to go a little higher, it wasn't stable. When I tried running Cinebench, it just crashed. I even tried 4.35 GHz, but to no avail. Next, I went to the B450, and without going past 1.45 volts, specifically the same 1.43 volts, I got an all-core overclock of 4.3 GHz and a Cinebench score of 3,316. So basically the same thing. Now I'll also say that I had to up the AIO's fan and flow rate for both motherboard's overclocks to get decent temps. When going into this, one potential concern I had was making sure that I could get my RAM up to at least 3600, which is where it needs to be for you to max out the 1800MHz Infinity Fabric. And really quickly, I know some of you refer back to this slide to determine that it doesn't go into 2-1 mode until 1867MHz, but when doing this video, I found this in the reviewer's guide. As you can see, it specifically states that AMD manually made it stay in 1-1 mode past 3600, so that's basically an overclock. With that said, the B450 was able to get my RAM to 3733 anyway. Basically, the B450 handled AMD's 12-core CPU exceptionally well. Now, there is one thing that I'll note. Within Ryzen Master, the peak current limit of the motherboard, or EDC, was initially at 100% on the B450 when I overclocked it. But I was able to get it down to 83% and stay there by changing the power plan to the Ryzen Balance plan, which comes with your drivers. I also noticed that when I lowered the maximum processor state within the power plan, it also got to 83%, but no matter how low I got, it wouldn't go less than that 83. Now, when it was at 100%, the MOSFETs got pretty warm to the touch, but at 83% it seems better and less under serious load. And of course, you can technically raise those limits, but it's usually best to stick with the limits the manufacturer set unless you have active cooling over the VRMs. And if you're worried about it, here's the thing. When using AMD's Precision Boost Overdrive, the power gets much lower, and while Cinebench sees a somewhat small change in score, the game I tested specifically because it's not all that GPU bottleneck, so to see a big difference in the CPU, using the 5700XT World War Z at 1080p only saw a 2% FPS boost when running the all-core overclock versus Precision Boost Overdrive. At 1440p, I'm sure the difference would completely disappear. Really, what I'm getting at is this, there's almost zero reason to buy an X570 motherboard for those who already own or plan to buy the X470 or even B450. Unless you either want some feature that only the X570 has like PCI Express 4.0, or you want to break some benchmark and you're willing to up the voltage to unsafe levels to get there. I mean, let's be honest, the X570 absolutely has better power delivery, and I hope to get my video out on the top X570 boards, but with the minimal overclocking of 3rd gen Ryzen, you aren't going to see any real performance difference in day-to-day -day use, or at least nothing that even remotely justifies the price tag. Of course, with all of that said, the 16-core Ryzen CPU is coming soon, so that could be a different story, and check back for that if it happens. So while that does it for today, let me know what motherboard you're using 3rd Gen Ryzen on down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.